Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome back to Africa Prime. We're speaking to Motsipa Matlala, he's president of the National African Farmers Union. A very warm welcome back. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And we do have to delve into your arm as a commercial farmer. You were saying before the break that you're not a that when I was talking about successful farmers, you were saying you don't consider yourself to be one. But I mean, you are one, you are a successful commercial farmer. But what I think is even more important is how you came to acquire the land and how you're operating your farm right now. <laughs> Yes, I, um, I have not been assisted by anybody, but I want to think that someone that I, can, I can't see with my naked eye maybe assisted me, for which I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to the land bank and to the leadership of the land bank at that time that indeed assisted me to acquire this property and other properties. And I think that um, 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 one look up to this property and, and other properties that I have uh, with pride. Uh, because as a farmer, you have got to have a passion first. Uh, there is no way that you can actually farm if you don't have the passion to farm. Where does your passion come from? Because you were saying to me that, that some of you, you were talking to me about formal education and how you were saying to me that you don't have formal education, but a lot of your schooling, if you would call it that, came from the mining sector. How do you marry mining sector and then farming? Well, it is very interesting. Um, I always tell people all the time that I never went to school. And people don't believe me when I say I never went to school. I am um, very grateful to a number of people that actually played uh, such a a very important role in my in my young life. You see, I come from the rural areas, and I grew up like many rural, you know, fellows uh, grew up. Uh, we were working very hard as as young boys, uh, respecting our parents, and our parents was were everybody that were of the same age with our parents, and I still live like that. Uh, we have never at one, one particular point, you know, disrespected the adults. Uh, that's my life. But I think um, my church and the leader of the church played a significant role in my education. Um, I call it my education because at least I am who I am because of this leader that I respect with my life. And many people. The mining industry is actually one industry that taught me so many things. I am a qualified person when it comes to the mine because I worked underground, I trained people on the mines. What did you learn in the mining industry that, that, that you're using now <clears throat> as a commercial farmer? You, you know hard work, discipline. Um, uh, I must tell you that um, the kind of life that the miners of, the, of, the, of, of my era had to go through are the things that I don't want to talk about right now. But these are the things that I can exclusively just tell, not the public, but my children. But that, those negativities also had positivities as well. Working hard. I remember at one point we became the first world um, number one coal producing mine on earth. And we were working three shifts, working hard. This has built some of us into believing in ourselves, into working for what we have worked for. And I think, um, yes, into becoming a commercial farmer, the farming comes from my mother and my father. Um, these are two people that I would honor to my grave. I want to talk about, we were talking about agriculture, we are still talking about agriculture, and I said that it's impossible to talk about agriculture in South Africa without talking about the land issue yes. and where we are when it comes to the land question. And I would like you to talk to that in terms of just what you've done in terms of acquiring this farm and how you bought the farm from the previous owners and the relationship 
that you had from the previous owners who happened to be white farmers as well? Well, <clears throat> somewhere in 2003, if I'm not wrong or four, I approached the land bank. The land bank made uh, the funding available to me and of course I bought the land that was owned by the Diyakher family. Very good people, I must say. They were on the farm. After I bought that land, I requested them to stay on the farm for the next five years. And indeed what happened was unbelievable. The relationship between my family and, his, and their family, myself and the former owner of the farmer, was out of this world. I must indicate to you, Hannah, that there is very serious goodwill in farming. Contrary to what people think about farmers, my experience with various farmers, not only in Bumalanga where I come from, because you must appreciate that I've traveled quite a lot. As the president of NAFO South Africa, I was traveling throughout the nine provinces of, of South Africa, and I traveled Africa. If I can remember, I think I've traveled more than 35 countries in our, in, in the, on the continent. And what is important, clearly, is to look at farming and acquiring of land with an economic eye. It is not necessary to look at these issues with a political eye 100%. Remember, when you acquire a land, you're not acquiring it for your own good. You are acquiring it because it's, you're going to do business on the farm. What is the role of the black farmer in progressing themselves to be able to compete and to be able to be successful in the commercial space? <laughs> Look, if we don't change from the way we do things, there will be no black farmers here in South Africa. Look, remember that we have deregulated agriculture in this country. Remember that black farmers have not been in the sector for a, for a very long time. And remember that markets have been created whereby the black farmers were not actually participating in those markets. What I'm now then really trying to tell you is that the help that you need cannot actually be the role of government alone. It is not going to happen if we expect this government to then begin to develop black farmers exclusively alone. We need the international community to come in like the British government. I still want to know what the black farmer's no. role is. No, I understand. But, but we need then the private sector to also come in. But our role is no different role than what the white farmer's role would be. The only thing that we would need is tools to ensure that we produce and we produce quality food. Secondly, we develop ourselves and we ensure that the future generations are also developed. We make a contribution to our children, we train them, they work with us, and they become good farmers of the future. This is, the, this is what I think should be our role. And we ensure that we safeguard the, the, the food security of, of our country for the next 50 years. That is what our role is. But now there is a, there is a challenge. If we don't correct this, and we take agriculture in black schools as quickly as it is possible and ensure that the SABC and government continue to support programs that talk, discuss, and encourage peoples and children and youth into agriculture, then it's not going to happen. Therefore, our role will be minimized and it will not be felt. It will not impact on anybody. One of the things that you've said, um, and I'm going to read it here, you say black farmers must be able to participate in the total agriculture value chain, including the processing of produce, the development of commodity associations, and the accessing of international markets. When it comes from just taking that product out of the ground, or when it comes to, to, to animals, dealing with that, taking it all the way through that value chain to the market, how much is being done right now into, in, in the space of black farmers? No, absolutely. 
you, you know, uh, the three issues that you are mentioning are very critical. Indeed, black farmers must, re must most certainly participate in the total value chain, uh, value chain agriculturally. But you know, when we are addressing our own issues in South Africa, Hannah, you must not forget that the international communities, the farmers of the world are not waiting for us to resolve our own differences. And I'm saying, therefore, that the, 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 the value chain concept as was, was developed by the strategic plan for the South African agriculture, it is my wish that it could, it could be taken somewhere in order to ensure that the agricultural sector is open to everybody. And it is no longer, you know, open by lip service. It must be open practically. And, and, and the banks must now begin to also make their own contribution. Because clearly, the people of South Africa cannot continue to foot the bill. The business must come in and make a contribution as well. You know, we make the mistake of thinking that the Department of Agriculture and therefore the Department of Rural Development can themselves develop black farmers. They can't. Everybody in South Africa must come on board. Thank you so much for joining us, and we have to leave it there. I cannot believe that we've run out of time again. But Thank it's a, you. such a fascinating topic, and I wish we could talk more. And probably in the future, we are going to talk more because this is a developing pro program. It's a it's a it's a topic that is so important to this country and so important, like you say, to each and every one of us. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it, and it was my pleasure to be here. I have faith in the leadership of our people in this country. Thank you. Well, that was Mutsipa Matlala. He's president. Of the National African Farmers Union and we were speaking about agriculture in South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. Do have a fantastic evening.